Hey everyone, Drybread here. Pokemon Gold with only one Diglett was a brutal solo run. Let's follow that up with a team run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with only Lieutenant Surge's team and moves? Alright, so let's take a look at this team. We've got Voltorb, Pikachu, and Raichu. Right away, I'm noticing that Voltorb has no electric moves, and Raichu has no non-electric moves that deal damage, so those are going to be problems. Sonic Boom on Voltorb is kind of cool, but it's probably only going to be good for, like, the first gym. It looks like the only move that we've got that's any good on this whole team is Thunderbolt. I, I guess, debatably, Thunder Wave on Pikachu. Oh, and also, Lieutenant Surge uses X-Speed 25% of the time. Yes, that's actually how he decides to use one. He doesn't use one because he's too slow, he just rolls dice and decides to randomly use one. Because of that, I'm gonna say that we're allowed to use X-Speed if we want. I'm pretty sure I've never used one in my life, since X-Speed isn't exactly the most useful item in the world, and we're gonna be outspeeding everything anyway. Uh, <laughs> but it's funny, so I guess we're allowed? Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I bet I can win, but anytime we run into a ground and rock type Pokemon, it's gonna be a nightmare. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Lieutenant Surge's Pokemon and moves. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, X speed, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. Oh, and sorry if my voice sounds weird today or if I'm enunciating weird today. I bit my lip really bad last night. <laughs> This, this is a frequent problem, to be honest. <laughs> I can't let my swollen lip get in the way of work, though. <laughs> so right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to place Charmander with Voltorb so that we can do the whole run with it. We can catch Pikachu super easy anyway, so by starting with Voltorb, we actually get to use Surge's team the whole run, instead of just using, like, one Pokemon until we can get the rest. I picked to replace Charmander so that our rival would have Blastoise. That might sound weird because he's water type, but if I picked anything else then our rival would have a water and flying type instead, and that would be even easier for us to take down. So doing this might be harder. Plus, if he doesn't have Venusaur then he has Executor, and Executor can be a real pain at the end of the game. So again, that might be a harder fight for us. So Viridian Forest. Not only do we need to grind here quite a bit, but this is actually where we catch the entire rest of our team. This is the only place in the game with Pikachu, and we can only encounter it 5% of the time, but to be honest, I'll be grinding here for so long that I'm not really worried about that. One Pikachu is gonna stay a Pikachu, that one's gonna know Quick Attack so it can hit ground types. The other one won't since it's gonna be the one that becomes the Raichu and has no non-electric damaging moves, for whatever reason. That doesn't matter though, because the Rock Gym is all up to Voltorb, and I'm not really that worried. If I had to grind until I could win with Tackle, then this would take much longer, but at level 17 we learned Sonic Boom, and honestly, that's the main use of Voltorb. Sonic Boom always does exactly 20 damage, if it hits, so this will be our way of handling rock and ground types, at least the ones that are super early in the game. At some point, Screech and Tackle might be the way to go, but we'll see how the game progresses. Honestly, this is probably the only time Voltorb is going to be the star of the team. Other than this, he's just going to be using Screech once in a blue moon. If you don't start with Voltorb, by the way, then you can't actually get to him until you can use Surf outside of battle, and there's just no way I'd ever need to use this thing that late in the game, so at least by starting with it, we can have him keep his level up a bit. Let's go try that rock gym. Now, of course it was super easy with Sonic Boom. They hardly even hurt us, no problem at all. Now that we can travel again, we've got lots of trainers to fight. I take the chance to start leveling up our Pikachu. Pikachu? Pikachus? I'm not sure what the plural version of Pikachu is, but I kind of feel like it's probably just Pikachu. Anyway, we gotta level them up, because they're gonna be doing far more damage than Voltorb ever has. Mostly the one that's gonna be Raichu, since it'll learn Thunderbolt, and that's actually a good move. In fact, it's the only good move our whole team is allowed to learn, since I need to use Surge's terrible moveset. 
None of our Pokemon learn Thunderbolt naturally, by the way. We have to get the TM from Surge to get that. In Mount Moon, I did still have Voltor bother to fight the Geodudes to keep him leveled up a little bit. I don't know how necessary that's going to be since Voltorb is probably never going to be that useful for the team, but he's our only real answer for rock types this early, so I may as well make sure that he's strong enough to fight the required hikers north of Nugget Bridge. Overall though, I'm not too worried about Celadon. Pikachu doesn't learn Thunderbolt by level up until Pokemon Yellow, so we're only going to have Thundershock going into that fight, but I still think it's winnable at a decent level. On our way through though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Gums are good for the YouTube algorithm. Oh, real quick before I try the Water Gym, I got both Pikachu to level 17, so now they both have Thundershock, Growl, Thunder Wave, and Quick Attack, but only one of them is allowed to use Thunder Wave and Quick Attack. Surge's Raichu doesn't have those, so we just won't allow the use of that on one of the Pikachus, you know, to match his team. If there was a move deleter, I'd use that, but that didn't exist in this game. So first was Staryu, so I had our non-Thunder Wave using Pikachu use Thundershock. We actually ended up lucking out and paralyzing him anyway though, so we took one less hit. Against Starmie, I switched to the other Pikachu to use Thunder Wave, and then just kept using Thundershock until we fainted, then finished it off with the other Pikachu. It was a little close, but it honestly wasn't that bad. The rival might be worse though. Wow, the rival fight ended up being an easy first try. I just switched back and forth between both Pikachu to shake off the defense drops, and pretty easily took them all down. Part of that was that he had Squirtle, but honestly, even if it was Bulbasaur, we'd have just won with Sonic Boom. It's still worth him using Squirtle for how much harder he's going to be in the final boss battle. SSN time. Yeah, of course I'm going to fight every trainer here. The place is loaded with water types, so we can one-shot most of the place to clear it out for experience real fast. We already beat the previous rival fight, and this one tends to not really be that much harder, so I expect it'll go fine. Gotta get it done before I can go to the electric gym though, and we need to beat that to get the TM for Thunderbolt, so let's go take out the rival. First was Pidgeotto, who was pretty easy with a few Thunder Shocks. We got hit by Sand Attack, but that's fine, we just switched out to the other Pikachu to get rid of it. Raticate had Quick Attack, so we took some decent damage before we could take it out. Next is Kadabra, and this one is pretty dangerous. Quick Attack was doing less than I expected, and we instantly got crit by Confusion. We crit with Quick Attack on the follow-up to take it down though. Last was Wartortle, so I had the most damaged Pikachu stay in to paralyze him and Thundershock. Luckily, Thundershock crit for a one-shot. Not bad. Will the Electric Gym be a first try too? Time for the Surge on Surge battle. Right away, I used our non-Quick Attack Pikachu to fight Voltorb. It took forever and we only had four health when we took him down, but we easily would have fainted if he just didn't use Screech way too much. Next was his Pikachu, who easily took ours out with Quick Attack, so I just switched into our own Quick Attack Pikachu to take him down. Last is his Raichu, we still don't have one of those yet. I just kept using Quick Attack as Surge was wasting time with Thundershock and X-Speed. I don't know why he didn't just go for Thunderbolt, he'd have easily won if he did. Anyway, it was really close thanks to him critting so much, but in the end we were able to send in our underleveled Voltorb to get the final hit. It was really close, but it was a win. As soon as we finish the Electric Gym, I use his TM to teach Thunderbolt to the Pikachu that's gonna be a Raichu. Finally, a good move. This should make it a lot easier to tell the two Pikachu apart until we get a Thunderstone. So, we have to get through Rock Tunnel before we can make any progress. There's a hiker in here that's usually pretty brutal with three Pokemon that love to blow up. We have a Voltorb and he can use Sonic Boom, but that move isn't really that strong anymore. The hiker picks random moves, so we could just try a few times, then maybe we can get one of his Pokemon to faint without blowing up. Then we'd be fine, because we could just let the other two blow up and still have one Pokemon left. Anyway, Rock Tunnel's gonna take a little while, so now's a great time to tell you about this video's sponsor, Chimera. Well, less than a month ago, I was shoveling snow, and uh, yesterday it was 28 degrees Celsius out, so um, welcome to spring? Honestly, that's kind of summer weather here, but whatever, Canada. Let's hope that it reels back and becomes spring for more than two days, because man summer can be murderous in the greater Toronto area. <laughs> hey, you know what'll last more than a few weeks, though? These awesome Chimera shirts. I've been wearing all my Chimera clothes for over a year now, and I have seen literally no wear and tear. 
yeah, even like the graphic tees that I'm showing you on the screen, just turn them inside out, cold wash them, and they still look great. I haven't noticed any kind of color fading or anything on my shirts. So if you want to support the channel and look good while doing it, hit up the link in the description to go to Chimera and pick up something comfortable and breezy to wear this spring. If your spring is breezy and comfortable where you are. If you're gonna go pick something up, then make sure to use the promo code MADRYBRED at Cheka to get 10% off your order and to let them know that I sent you. Let's go handle that hiker. Okay, so the hiker fight was both easier and dumber than expected. The first Geodude didn't hurt Voltorb enough to make him faint after self-destruct, believe it or not, so I could just use Pikachu to spam Growl and waste time until he blew up the rest of his team. Thanks to Growl, it didn't even really do that much damage. I don't think I've ever used Growl to survive self-destruct before, but there's a first for everything. Rocket hideout time. I'm fighting everybody in here for sure. It's annoying that I have to switch away from Raichu every time I run into a ground type, and some people here have Sand Shrew, so it takes a few tries. In fact, I actually fainted to regular trainers in here for once. But it is what it is. All I care about is getting every level I can before I fight Giovanni, since he loves his rock and ground types. Honestly, Giovanni might be one of the most consistently difficult parts of this run. I'm gonna see how it goes. Okay, so this actually took a solid 15 tries. We need Voltorb to handle his first two Pokemon, and yeah, Onix and Rhydon aren't that dangerous normally, but we're using an underleveled Voltorb and we can only do 20 damage at a time. You know, if we even hit. The moment we got to his final Pokemon, we just one-shot it with Thunderbolt. Oh, and as soon as I finished that, I bought the Thunderstone from the store. Yeah, I should have done that before this Giovanni fight. I completely forgot that. I completely forgot that I could have just gotten the Thunderstone first for a better Raichu. Not that that would have really helped much. I don't think his stats would have saved us there. It's kind of cool to have the full team so early in the run, but this also means that my team isn't getting any better than they are outside of leveling up. This is going to be real hard by the time of the ground gym, isn't it? Let's hope the grass gym goes well. Yeah, this isn't happening. See, they resist our only good move, and she's actually using some pretty strong Pokemon, so it's not that easy to brute force. We couldn't even take down our first Pokemon. Some of my Pokemon are just too low level right now, and there's no experience share, so grinding is pretty rough. Why don't I just go try the Pokemon Tower Rival fight first? We don't have to do the Grass Gym for a long time anyway. Okay. The rival fight was super easy, we pretty much swept him with Thunderbolt. I've gotta say, I really wish that there was a move deleter in this game. I keep wanting to use Quick Attack on Raichu, then remembering that I've gotta to switch to Pikachu for that. Anyway, I try heading south to the Poison Gym next. I make sure to fight some trainers on the way, but we're already running into a snag. I need to switch train up some of my lower level Pokemon, since I know that I'll at least need the Voltorb for the Ground Gym. But at the same time, my Raichu can't handle being switched back into so often, since it takes free hits in the process. It's just not strong enough to handle taking free hits like this all the time. Even wild Pokemon are often stronger than our Pikachu and Voltorb, despite me pretty actively using them in battle. Multi-Pokemon runs almost always require a lot more grinding than solo runs. Yeah, I don't need any individual Pokemon to hit max level, usually, but splitting the experience between the whole team just means I need to stop and take grinding breaks far more often. I don't usually show them because they're not very interesting, but if you've ever seen my level jump up like it did earlier at the Water Gym, it's because I had to stop and fight some wild Pokemon for a while. Anyway, Poison Gym. It was shockingly easy, to the point that we didn't even take a hit. There were trainers in the gym that nearly fainted my whole team, and yet Koga himself didn't even hit us. He hardly tried, to be honest. Now that Koga's down, we can surf outside of combat, so I go straight for Cinnabar. You just know we have to try Blaine early. He has no excuse if he loses. Our team is awful, and his team has got much stronger Pokemon and moves than mine. I can't believe it. We haven't even beaten the Grass Gym yet, and Blaine is over here failing to deal damage to a single Raichu. Every time he had a chance to hit us, he'd either use Tail Whip from Rapidash or Roar from Arcanine. I'm starting to wonder if Blaine's on our side. Maybe he just wants to see us do well in these challenges. After that, I went back to clean up the Grass Gym. It was pretty easy. We still didn't hit Victory Bell that hard, but we're such a high level compared to him at this point that we weren't in any real danger. I mean, we could have been if they were smart and used status afflictions, but they didn't, so we were good. That means it's Sylphco time. We've got a rival fight that's usually really hard. The Giovanni fight, 
the Psychic Gym, then another Giovanni fight over at the Ground Gym. Normally, the Giovanni fights are the super easy ones, but I'm actually pretty much convinced that we don't stand a chance against Giovanni right now, so I'm switch training again. I don't remember if Giovanni actually uses any ground moves in the next fight, but he does have some strong ground types, so we can't just use Thunderbolt. We're gonna need Pikachu and Voltorb to be strong enough to carry us through that fight, since we can't use Raichu's quick attack. Before I clear the whole place, though, I'm gonna need to fight the rival and see how it goes. Wow, okay, I didn't expect this. The rival fight was a no-damage sweep. We couldn't one-shot execute, but he missed Hypnosis, so we didn't get hit. That was wild! I don't think Giovanni will go nearly as well, though. Alright, so the first two Pokémon on this team in this fight aren't actually ground-types, so we could just one-shot them with Raichu, but next is Rhyhorn. I started whittling away at him with Sonic Boom with our Voltorb, but man, it took forever. Sonic Boom was way too weak at this point. I wonder if it's worth using Screech three times instead. Hard to say, that's missing out on 60 damage while lowering their defense alone. Anyway, eventually, it went down and last was Nidoqueen, so I tried throwing in Pikachu to use Growl, but only got in one before Giovanni used Guard Spec so we couldn't lower his stats anymore. That's no good. I was gonna rely on Screech. Maybe if I just try a few more times? Okay, so next time I used Screech three times on Rhyhorn, but that went way worse. It took far longer to make him faint with Screech and Quick Attack than it did just by using Sonic Boom. Okay, uh, I'm gonna level up a little bit more and come back, I guess. A few levels higher, and we have a new strategy that sometimes does alright. It takes luck, but if we use Raichu against Rhyhorn, then sometimes we can spam Growl to lower his attack before Giovanni uses Guard Spec. On this attempt, we got six Growls in, so Voltorb took way less damage taking him down. I tried the same thing on Nidoqueen, but only got two Growls. I had Pikachu spam Quick Attack until we fainted, then had Voltorb finish it with a bunch of Sonic Booms. I'm just lucky that Voltorb didn't get poisoned. I'm gonna be honest though, I don't think we stand a chance against Giovanni in the next fight yet. Let's go do the Psychic Gym first. Psychic Gym was a pretty easy first try with Raichu. We got banged up a bit between Psychic and Poison Powder, but Alakazam missed his first chance to finish us off by going for Psy Wave like usual. Such a dud move. Ground Gym is gonna be absolutely horrible, isn't it? Okay, so the first Rhyhorn goes down pretty much the same way as last time we fought Giovanni, but right after we get completely shut down. Dugtrio, who we hardly do any damage to, can one-shot both of our Pokémon who can hit him. Considering how weak Pikachu and Voltorb are, I'm honestly expecting us to need to gain at least 20 levels on each one of them just to win this fight. Now, I'm not supposed to sit for long periods of time for the sake of my neck, doctor's orders, so I'm gonna follow the advice of the literal hundreds of comments I've gotten this year alone and just hack in some rare candies. We've already got all the stat experience that we can get, so there's literally no difference between using rare candies and grinding regularly, other than how many hours it will take and how rough it'll be on my neck. Especially considering it's not like we can learn other moves, we have to use Lieutenant Surge's moves. What I'll do is level up Voltorb and Pikachu by 5 levels each time, then try a few times and see if it's possible yet. Make your guesses on what level we'll need to be to win. Honestly, I'm guessing level 70. I'll bring them up to level 50, then start trying. This is gonna be crazy, isn't it? Level 50! Yeah, things go even worse than on the previous attempt. Doesn't matter that we've already topped up our levels so much, the Rhyhorn battle at the start is all luck. Then Dugtrio right after still just one-shots us. I'm already feeling like my guess of 70 might be too low. <laughs> Level 55. This one went a little different, thanks largely to luck. Rhyhorn didn't hurt us as much since he took far longer to use guard spec, so we could get quite a few growls in. For Dugtrio, I got a growl in before I had to sacrifice Raichu. Pikachu did pretty good damage to him thanks to growl letting him survive a hit, but he fainted on the second one. Believe it or not, we were actually able to finish him off with Voltorb. That's a first. Next was Nidoqueen, so I used Screech a bit and tackled a lot. We won, but it was really close and largely luck. As soon as Nidoking came out, we went down while trying to lower his defense. You know what? We're making better progress than I expected. Level 60. Things went almost exactly the same as last time, even down to us getting to Nidoking but fainting before we heard him. I'm starting to wonder if I just can't win this fight until we get two growls in on Dugtrio. 
Maybe then I could have Pikachu last longer. Level 65. This time we do better against Dugtrio thanks to an extra Growl, so Pikachu survives. He'd have survived with a lot more health if we were just a level or two higher though, considering how close we were to two-shotting him. No matter what though, we still got to the same point against Nidoking and could only do a little bit of damage. Nidoqueen paralyzing Voltorb really doomed us. Level 70, thanks to us finally being able to two-shot Dugtrio with Pikachu, we can save Raichu and have him growl against more Pokemon later in the fight. Problem is, 25% of the time Giovanni will use a guard spec, so how many growls I get in is totally random. And the more time I spend growling, the more likely it is that I can't use Screech before he uses a guard spec. I've still never gotten past Nidoking, I have to keep leveling. Give me a minute, I actually have to hack in more rare candies. I ran out. This is insane. Level 75. This one was wild. Okay, Rhyhorn goes great. We get a lot of gravels in, so Voltorb doesn't get very hurt taking it down. For Dugtrio, I skipped Raichu and just had Pikachu 2 shot it, losing most of our health in the process. For Nidoqueen, I went straight for Voltorb so I could Screech, just for us to miss and Giovanni to use Guard Spec. Then right after, we got Poisoned by Poison Sting. I pretty much assumed I was doomed at that point, but I kept tackling and we actually took Nidoqueen out with only 4 health to spare. So I used that 4 health to let us get one Screech in on Nidoking before we fainted and I switched to Pikachu. Quick attack crit right away for great damage as Nidoking kept hitting us with really weak moves. We took him out for the very first time, but with only 21 health to spare. I thought I'd probably lose, but I could at least use Raichu to spam Growl without having to worry about fainting early. That's when I realized this Rhydon actually has Fissure. Because Gen 1 AI will just spam moves that are super effective, he will use this every turn. I really do mean every turn. The AI in Gen 1 never runs out of power points. The funny thing is, Fissure can't hit us. In Gen 1, Fissure can only one-shot a Pokemon if their base speed is lower than yours. Since our electric types all have higher base speed than Rhydon does, we can't get hit, so we could just slowly chip away at him with Quick Attack until we won. I can't believe we finally did it, and that the battle was that dumb. <laughs> I wonder how the rival will be after this, considering I haven't really leveled Raichu in ages now. Well, that was really easy. Nice to have an easy fight after all that ground gym. Even with all the rare candies, the ground gym took so many tries. The funny thing is our Voltorb and Pikachu are still super useless despite being way over leveled. They just don't have any good moves. The whole rival fight was easy either than Alakazam, but that's just because I tried to beat it with Pikachu. We're in the last stretch before the Elite Four, and I'm still trying to get experience on Raichu as we travel. As far as I can predict, we're only going to need Voltorb and Pikachu for Bruno's Onyx. Outside of that, it's mostly up to Raichu to win the run for us, what with him having the only good move and all. I've got to get him some experience while I can. I just hope that Lorelai is easy so that we can grind by fighting her if we have to. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Man, I don't know what to think. Raichu is still pretty much the only usable Pokemon on the team, and his stats aren't exactly awesome, but they're around what we often end up with in solo runs, I guess, just with a little less move variety. Voltorb and Pikachu both have hilariously bad stats for their level, but it's Voltorb and Pikachu, so what do you expect? They're hardly going to be able to do any damage. I still think I'm mostly going to use them for Growl and Screech. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. She was super easy thanks to using almost all water types. Thunderbolt did a great job. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. So this fight was super easy other than his two Onyx. They were actually tough and made it so it took a few tries. See, Rage is normally pretty much useless in Gen 1 since it locks you into only using Rage, but because we have to hit Onyx so many times to make him faint, it builds up a lot of attack. We can actually lose this fight if Onyx doesn't pick the right moves, but it wasn't too bad. Three or four tries in and we got a win. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. This one was super easy, the only member of her team that put up a fight at all was the last Gengar, and although we got confused, we still won on the first try particularly easily. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. First was Water Onyx, so I just one-shot it with Thunderbolt, and second was Dragonair. Knowing it resists electric moves, I instead used Pikachu to use Quick Attack. It didn't really work great, but Dragonair ended up just using agility over and over until it fainted. I have no idea why, but I guess it thought it was a great idea, 
I'm gonna hit slam once, at least there's that. The second Dragonair played smarter, hitting a hyper beam for a lot of damage. We went down, but not before paralyzing him. We could easily finish him off with Thunderbolt with a Raichu. Next is Aerodactyl, who was a one-shot, and last was Dragonite, who hit Hyper Beam for tons of damage, but that left him stunned so we could use some Thunderbolts for a knockout. Finally, the Pokémon Champion. Pidgeot was a one-shot with a critical Thunderbolt, and second was Alakazam. Now he can be really dangerous depending on what he uses, but on this try, our Thunderbolt fully paralyzed him right away, then we crit so he never hit us. Amazing start. For Rhydon, I switched to Pikachu to start using Growl, then eventually to Voltorb for Screech. It took us entire minutes to take down Rhydon since we did so little damage, but he hardly did anything to us, so it was fine. RK9 was really easy with Thunderbolt thanks to him not wanting to hurt us, and next is Executor. This is where things fall apart though. This absolute beast is not only tanky, but he likes to put us to sleep, and he does shockingly great damage with Stomp and Barrage. Sleep in Gen 1 is especially brutal, since you can't attack on the turn that you wake up. Dude totally destroys our team with one Executor. I knew I made the right choice when I made sure that he had this instead of Venusaur. I'm gonna level up Raichu a few times and then try again. Okay, next time, Raichu is level 65. This took a ton of tries, but the general strategy here is to try and get some Growls in on Executor so that he doesn't mess up Voltorb as much. Even on this attempt, Voltorb ended up falling asleep for ages and taking tons of damage, so we didn't actually manage to deal much before we fainted. I had to brute force it with Raichu's Thunderbolt. They really weren't doing much, but neither were his stomps, so at least we could take him down. He never managed to put Raichu to sleep on this try. Last was Blastoise, so we hit Thunderbolt for a much needed one shot. Oh man, that one was brutal. It's funny, it was a run where a decent amount of the fights only took one or two tries, and yet I still had to try dozens of times on the hardest fights. I was honestly really worried about that ground gem. If it was fire red and they had better moves, we'd have been so doomed it's unreal. I really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge should be up next Saturday like usual, with Pokemon Platinum with only one Shinx. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Now, normally, this is where I love to do the outro, where I ramble about all kinds of things that you couldn't possibly care about, uh, but I'm actually quite rushing to get this voiceover done, because I have, um, not, not my landlord, but like a handyman for my landlord, who should be coming over any minute to fix our sink, because, uh, a little... Little, I'm not a plumber. Look, okay, I'm not a plumber, so there's someone out there who's gonna scream at me for not knowing the names of these things. But underneath of the kitchen sink, there is the... Mm, the P-trap? Is that what that's called? The the U-shaped thing? You know. There's a little cap on the bottom of it, a twisty cap, and this sink is just ancient. I noticed that it was leaking, and it looks like there's a big crack in like the turny knob thing at the bottom. Uh, so we let our dude know that, and he said he'd come by and take a look at it. So he's gonna come by and take a look at it, and I gotta go be ready for that. So thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.